ladies and gentlemen, welcome into another stadium video, and today I wanted to go over some of the best Division 2 slash Division 3 college football stadiums, not only the best, just the weirdest, the craziest ones that I could find. It is kind of hard, honestly, to find Division 2, II, Division 3 stadiums, they're really isn't any crazy lists about it, especially Division Three football, but I was able to find several different articles, and we're going to take a look at this first one. This is a Division Three Cortland Stadium, and the reason I have it on this list is kind of just the best or the weirdest stadiums. It's because of the exterior. It's got a very a unique exterior. It's right up against the lacrosse field as well. Now, when it comes to the stadium itself, it's pretty bland. It's pretty much what you would expect when it comes to Division Three. You've got two different sets of seats and, and then behind the end zones. Looks like almost, you know, maybe a little entrance area, but really no seating. And, uh, you know, when it comes to attendance with Division Two or Division Three stadiums, most of them you're looking at around 10,000, 15,000. The biggest Division II stadium there is is right around 22K, uh, but you can just see kind of the different seating bowls, and the exterior kind of caught my eye. Also, the fact that it's kind of right next to the lacrosse field there. The next one, it is Crusader Stadium. This is actually built up very well, and there is the idea that this team possibly, University of Mary Harlan Baylor, might consider moving to FCS because it is very impressive. It is a newer stadium. And the unique thing about this one, the entire one sideline, it looks like some type of little hangout building type area. You do have the stands underneath, but it's only like five or six rows. And then you've just got a giant building right behind that. If you're building a new stadium, man, I, I, that's just a strange architectural choice. It, it really is. It does not look good. Building a giant building with a bunch of windows like that, you know, you could do a lot of different things. You could build, you know, just kind of just a different like two deck approach, like lookout, you know, social space. But instead, just going with those giant windows, I mean, I guess there are some balconies. It's just a strange choice to me, honestly. But the other side, you can see there are some stands. And then behind the end zones. This is typically what you'll get. You'll get the grassy area and that grassy area always reminds me of like MLB spring training games. They always have the grass out beyond the outfield where people sit on like the little hills and stuff. That's what it looks like, but it's a decent stadium and it is relatively new. The next one, it is Bowman Gary Stadium, home of Winston-Salem. And this is actually a racetrack as well. And I believe this is the biggest Division II stadium, at least according to Wikipedia, with a capacity around 22K. Very, very strange. J just peculiar in general. Now, they did restore the stadium. It was in a state of disarray, and it went through a renovation process, and you can see it now. Obviously, the seating is a bit ridiculous, considering it has to, you know, confined to the length of the racetrack. And believe it or not, they actually do have college football games going on as a race is going on. Uh, could you imagine if they did? I mean, they should try and do that. It'd be pretty interesting. I guess it'd be kind of dangerous, but in general, also you can see behind the one end zone, there seems to be a nice brick building and they've got the scoreboard right on top of it. That, that, that's an interesting design right there, but it's always nice to see that you can kind of look out and watch the game as you're relaxing inside right there. Uh, and, and then there you can see also the racetrack, very odd design. I, I mean, just, you know, you're not going to see that anywhere else when it comes to like FCS or FBS football, but there is Bowman Gary Stadium. The next one, it is Mitchell Stadium. This is located in West Virginia, Bluefield State. And the reason it's on this list is kind of the most interesting, weirdest stadiums is just because they built it into a forest. Like you can literally see a, a massive, dense forest right next to it. The stadium itself is very typical for Division II slash Division III teams. Smaller capacity, limited to one lower bowl. There's no upper deck to it, but it's just where it's located, the area 
very sweet views, especially if you're a player playing there. Imagine autumn games when the leaves change. Like, honestly, like right now, that would be beautiful to see that, especially like a 3.30 game. And they do have some lights, it looks like, on top of hills as well. So kind of a creative design in terms of that. But yeah, just a really unique design in terms of they can kind of get away with doing this. Like, like putting these stadiums in densely forest areas with Division 2 and Division 3 because there's a limited need for parking. When you're talking about bigger college football stadiums, there's always going to be a bunch of parking lots, so they kept to kind of knock down the areas surrounding it. It reminds me a lot of the situation that the Braves had when they moved to Cumberland County and they built Truist uh, Park. Unfortunately, originally there was a bunch of trees around it, but they knocked them all down and kind of built up that area. But that is cool. You know, Division II, Division Three teams can do it because there's not a need for a big parking lot because the stadium only has a capacity of like 10 or 12,000 people anyways. The next one is the former Kimba Memorial Stadium for West Texas. Now, West Texas recently built a new stadium, which has been named the best Division II college football stadium. We'll get to that in a second, but this is their old one that they used, and it's basically just built into the side of a hill. That's all it is. It's pretty unique. You know, there's a few aerial photos of this stadium with all of the lights, like, off around it, and it looks really cool, but obviously the uniqueness of it really wanes when... You know, it becomes daylight and you see it's just a bunch of hills and it looks like crap. So West Texas did, did build a brand new stadium and there were several different renderings of it. This is the final result and yeah, it looks really nice. It's built up very well. I mean, it looks honestly better than several max stadiums in Division 1. And there's no way this would be the worst stadium in terms of Division 1. Sure, it's got a very small capacity, but I will say just looking at... I mean, I guess it's not built up that much because you look behind the one end zone, there's nothing there. The other end zone, looks like there's a nice little hill. Maybe some restrooms over there. Uh, but it is a, a pretty nice stadium, especially for Division 2. They also do have the, the two-deck approach with kind of the bleachers below. That's something that's very rare when it comes to any Division 1 or Division 2 stadium. But their old stadium, I would say, certainly was very unique. The next one is the Redwood Bowl, home of Humboldt State. And this is another one. It's literally located into a forest. I mean, there are trees coming out right next to the field. I think that that this was the one that had that. And the aerial shot of this, just the strange campus design. Yeah, you can see the trees. I mean, the trees are lurking. They're about to take over the football stadium. Looks like it has a capacity of about 5,000. There, there is no seating there. And unfortunately, it does have the dreaded track going around it, which is always a terrible look. But the fact that it's so close to a forest, it does make it unique and kind of one of the weirder Division II slash Division III college football stadiums. The next one is Blue Wahoo Stadium in West Florida. Now, I guess you can say this is multi-purpose, but it's really just an, a, a, like a minor league baseball stadium that they turned into a football stadium with kind of those, you can see those temporary seats they put up. It, it reminds me of like a college football bowl game being played at an MLB stadium. Either way, the, the location of it in West Florida, right next to the water, and the fact that it is, I guess, multi-purpose, it does make it unique. That is West Florida and you can just take a look at some photos of that. And then the final one, it is Lubbers Stadium, home of Grand Valley State. And you can take a look at this one also. Oh yeah, this was the one that was located right next to a golf course, I want to say. Just, just there's nothing surrounding it except for forest. Now the stadium itself, it's actually built up relatively well when you look at the one end zone with seats behind it. The other area looks like that's for the band. So yeah, even with the track, a pretty well built up stadium. And then just over top of it, it looks like marshy wetland area slash like a golf course. Kind of an interesting design in terms of the location of that one. But either way, guys, those are just some interesting, weird college football division two slash division three stadiums. That's going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on X. Link to that's always in the description.